Hey everyone! Today, we're going to talk about our lesson number one, Introduction to Fractions. In this lesson, you are expected to define basic terms and concepts in numbers and fractions, change improper fraction to mixed number and vice versa, and solve real-life problems involving fractions. As you can see in the pictures, in our lives or in our everyday lives, we have our own schedule on how we spend a day. This depends on the kind of lifestyle and even work that we have. Looking at the pictures above, answer the questions. First, identify the job or jobs that might be related to the pictures. Second, how can these jobs be related to fraction? During your high school life, you have already acquired some knowledge about fractions. Let us see how far you remember about fraction this lesson will give you a glimpse and a review of fractions. As you read the lesson, take note of the answers for the following guide questions. Number one, what are the kinds and relations of fractions? And number two, how do we change improper fraction to mixed number? But before anything else, let's have a short recap of some basic terms that we will encounter as we go beyond the language of fractions. Letter A, we have prime number. Prime number is defined as a positive integer except for one whose factors are only one and itself. Looking at the examples below, we have 5, 13, and 127. If we need to find the factors of 5, we need to choose two numbers that when we multiply, the answer is 5. And that is 1 and 5 because 1 multiplied by 5, that is 5. Five. Again, we're not going to use negative 1 and negative 5 because we're only referring to positive integers. So aside from that, there's no other factors for 5. Same with 13. Two numbers or two positive integers are 1 and 13 so that we can get the product of 13. And same with 127. Aside from that, we have the composite number. Composite number is defined as a positive integer except for 1, which can be expressed as a product of 2 or more positive integers. It has other factors besides 1 and itself. Looking at the examples, we have 28, 39, and 100. For 28, we have 1 times 28. We can get 28. But aside from that, we can also have 2 multiplied by 14 and same the answer is 28 same with 39 aside from 1 times 39 we can have 3 times 13 and we can get 39 and same with 100 there's so many factors for 100 it can be 1 multiplied by 100 50 multiplied by 2 5 multiplied by 20 and even 4 multiplied by 25 so, composite numbers, again, is a positive integer that has other factors besides 1 and itself. For the last part, we have relatively prime number. These are positive integers which do not have common prime factors. Examples are below. We have 6 and 35 and 4 and 121. For 6 and 35, the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, and 6 because 1 times 6 is equal to 6 and 2 times 3 is also equal to 6. However, when we're going to talk about 35, the factors are 1, 5, 7, and 35. And if you observe the factors of 6 and 35, there's no common prime factors for the both of them. So that is the same with 4 and 121. Let us now define what is a fraction. A fraction describes part of a whole when the whole is cut into equal parts. This circle has been cut into 4 equal parts and these equal parts are called fourths. That's why a fourth is written as 1 over 4. The other sections are equal to 3 fourths, which would be written as 3 over 4. Now, let us define again what is a fraction. Fraction represents a part of a whole again. 
It consists of a numerator and a denominator. When a whole quantity is divided into parts, these parts are called fractions. A fraction is written in the form of a over b, where a and b are whole numbers but b cannot be zero. The number on top, which is a, is called the numerator. And the number below, which is b, is called the denominator. Lastly, the line separated the two numbers is called vinculum. Let us now proceed to the discussion of basic concepts of fractions. As you can see in the slides, we have the kinds, definition, and examples. For the kinds of fractions, we have the proper and improper fractions. And under the improper fractions, we have the mixed number and the whole number. Let us first discuss the proper fraction. Proper fraction is a fraction whose numerator is smaller than the denominator. As you can see in the examples, we have 2 thirds, 3 fourths, and 1 over 15. In the first example, 2 thirds, 2 is smaller than the denominator, which is 3. Another, 3 is smaller than 4. And 1 is smaller than 15. As simple as that. Aside from that, let us go to improper fraction. Improper fraction is a fraction whose numerator is either equal to or greater than the denominator. That is why it was categorized into two. We have the mixed number and the whole number. When we're talking about mixed number, it says here that this is a combination of a whole number and a proper fraction. And we have here 5 over 2. As defined, the numerator could be greater than the denominator. So 5 is greater than 2. 5 over 2 can be written as 2 and 1 half. And I will teach you later how to get that. Aside from that, we have 19 over 5. Or it can be written as 3 and 4 fifths. Under the improper fraction, aside from mixed number, we have the whole number. Whole number is an integer and a natural number. Negative numbers are not considered to be whole numbers. For instance, we have 12 over 3. We know that 12, which is the numerator, is greater than 3, which is the denominator. That is why it is considered as improper fraction. However, when we multiply or divide rather, when we divide 12 by 3, we can get 4, which is a whole number. Same with 4 over 4. 4 over 4 is simply equal to 1, and 21 over 3 is simply equal to 7. Same in real-life situations, fractions also have relations, and it is categorized into 3. We have equivalent fractions, similar fractions and dissimilar fractions. When we're talking about equivalent fractions, it says here that these are fractions which have the same values. As example, we have one-half and two-fourth. When we find the lowest term of two-fourth, we can get also the one-half. Same with four over five. Four over five and eight over ten is also equal. And for our next lesson, we're going to talk about how can we say that 4 over 5 and 8 over 10 is equal. Same with similar fractions. Similar fractions are fractions which have a common denominator. This is the first thing that you need to remember. Similar fractions, common denominator. We have 1 over 10, 3 over 10, and 9 over 10. These are similar fractions because simply, they have common denominator, as simple as that. And lastly, we have the dissimilar fractions. Dissimilar fractions are fractions which have different denominators. This is the total opposite of similar fractions. Obvian fractions. For the meantime, let us learn how to change improper fractions to mixed numbers. Starting with changing improper fractions to mixed number or whole number and vice versa. A mixed number is the sum of a whole number and a proper fraction. Simply divide the numerator by the denominator. If there is a non-zero remainder, write the remainder over the denominator. 
Let's have an example. Number one, change 42 over 3 to a mixed or whole number. For our solution, as stated, we simply need to divide the numerator by the denominator. That is why we have 42 divided by 3. And the quotient for that is 14. So, 42 over 3 is simply equal to 14, which is a whole number. For example, number 2, we need to change 53 over 4 to a mixed number or a whole number. Our solution is simple. Divide 53 by 4. We get 13 with a remainder of 1. In that case, remember that the remainder will be written over the denominator. So in that case, 53 over 4 is simply equal to 13 and 1 fourth. Another thing to remember is when to change a mixed number to an improper fraction. We need to multiply the denominator by the whole number and add the numerator. Write the sum over the denominator to form the improper fraction. Also, if the denominator of a fraction is 1, it is equal to the numerator. Example, for number 1, we need to change 4 and 2 thirds to an improper fraction. For our solution, simply multiply 4 by 3, that is the whole number and the denominator, which is the product, is 12. And 12, we need to add 12 to the numerator, which is 2. So 12 plus 2 is equal to 14. In that case, 4 and 2 thirds is simply equal to 14 over 3, or 14 thirds. For number 2, we need to change again 2 and 3 over 8 to an improper fraction. Again, multiply the whole uh, number by the denominator and add the numerator. So 2 times 8 is equal to 16. 16 plus 3 is equal to 19. In that case, 2 and 3 over 8 is equal to 19 over 8. Next, for number 3, which of the following is bigger? 25 over 8 or 3 and 1 8? Let's try. First, let us change the second uh, given into a whole number or improper number so that we can see if that would be equal to 25 over 8. So we have 3 times 8 is equal to 24 plus 1 is equal to 25. So 3 and 1 8 is simply equal to 25 over 8. For our answer, none of them is bigger because they are simply equal. For our last example, let's have a problem solving. A piece of wood measures 12 feet. If a carpenter needs to cut it to have 5 pieces of wood, how long will each piece be in inches? For our solution, let us first convert the foot into inches. Since we all know that 12 inches is simply equal to 1 foot, we can say now that 12 feet multiplied by 12 inches over 1 foot is equal to 144 inches. To know how long each piece will be, we have to divide 144 by 5. And we can get 28, of course, with a remainder of 4. For our answer, we can say now that 144 over 5 is simply equal to 28 and 4 over 5 or 28 and 4 fifths inches, which is the length of each piece of wood. After knowing these examples, let us try this. A cake was served at the table. Rosalind ate one slice of cake, while Kimberly ate two slices. If there were initially four equal slices of cake, what fraction of the cake remained? So that would be the end of our lesson.